Hi, this is Carol Harnett with a One Take Work, Love, Play Daily video blog. And I'm talking to you from a rainy Connecticut day. Evidently, we're about to get deluged with more rain. And I've really been thinking, I woke up this morning and have been thinking about it more than I realized for probably the time I've been at TED till now, about the concept of caring. So the title of this is, How Do I Get You to Care? And the two things that I experienced were really a dichotomy. At TED, one of the speakers, and I apologize which one said it because I don't recall, said that the true test of a person is how we care for each other. Now, that lies in direct comparison to something that the Shins sing about, and a friend of mine loves to quote, which is that caring is creepy. And the two feel right complete opposite ends of the spectrum. And what I realized last week at TED, and I contemplated this morning when my friend's idea of, of caring is creepy popped back up in my head, is this. Um, I heard Thomas, I actually was in a, a, a private lunch with including Thomas Getz from Wired, who also wrote The Decision Tree, and, and Ron Gutman, who's been a serial entrepreneur in the healthcare space and now runs HealthTap. Both gentlemen are really involved in the personalization of healthcare data. And the conversation we wound up in is they believe that if they can present this more beautifully crafted uh, data that is personal to your specific situation with information that then correlates to that, that you would be more willing to change your behavior, particularly if you believe that you can. Um, I would tag on if you believe that it's a low impact behavior change versus a high impact behavior change. So for example, just completing an HRA is a low impact behavior change. Getting a flu shot is a low impact behavior change. Losing 50 pounds, high impact behavior change. So. We, that's their premise. They started that they believe that that alone is enough to start to get people to change their behavior. And I added something which they found interesting and concurred with, so maybe there's a nugget of truth to this. And that is that we have to not just put it, make it personal to the individual's situation overall, but to include something beyond themselves and their own body, and that's to include their larger family circle, their social circle. So for example, some of you have heard me tell a story about a fairly dramatic way I got somebody to pay attention to his weight is a gentleman that I knew who had lost and regained over 100 pounds three times. And I just told him how that impacted me personally. I told him that every time I saw him, I ran through CPR in my head. I used to be a CPR instructor and that kind of caught his attention. And then we wound up in this conversation about my greatest fear was that his wife who does not work and his three ch children were gonna wind up without him and that somebody else was gonna walk his daughter down the aisle. And that really startled him and he did wind up going on and losing more than 100 pounds again. The sad end of the story is that story didn't stick with him. Uh, and people who've heard the story before don't know the punchline, he's regained all the weight. But it did capture his attention for a while. And I believe that to the point of the speaker at TED, the true test of a person is your ability to care. Now, does care mean worry? I would say no, and Thomas Getz would say that as well. He's very against advertising that shows dramatic negative things like somebody's blood glucose level in an ambulance sitting in their living room as part of a print ad. He said that that doesn't seem to change behavior. Fear doesn't seem to change behavior. So we're not talking about worry. I think we're talking about concern and thinking outside ourselves, but knowing how we fit in that context. Dan Ariely has also done work, the behavioral economist, that has shown that in order for us to really care about something like a charitable venture in Africa, we have to do something that pulls us personally into that story. And I think of my TED friend, Mike Walsh, who recently lost his brother, and his most important charity is Charity Water, and he's decided to give up his birthday and what would have been his brother's birthday to raise money for Charity Water. I donated to that. A lot of other people have donated to that. Um, I always thought Charity Water was a great charity, but I donated it to, because Mike made that story personal to me. So this is a sort of um, serial example, uh, one post video blog, or one take video blog. But I think what I have to do in order to get you to care is to make it personal to you, and do that more than data, but to incorporate your whole life. So this is Carol Hernett with a one take work, work, play daily video blog, saying that I hope you're enjoying a great work day, and even though it's raining, or at least maybe where I live, that you're still getting some chance to play. And that, of course, you enjoy some great love. Have a good day. Good day. Good evening. One take. Remember. Bye.